The Rainbow Project provides specialised training and community education to help professionals offer a more responsive and inclusive service to members of the LGBT community. Anyone who says they didn't need to do the training probably needs to do it because um, it's, I haven't been able to discuss what you discuss at the training at any community event or even within the home. Well, I have found through the work, I've been working here for two and a half years now, and the main issues would be alcohol and drugs for a lot of young people, relationship breakdowns, family relationships. But I have found that time and time again, it's coming up a lot for young people that sexuality is a big issue for them. Training is required at a number of levels. There's the whole population-wide approach. It's about general awareness about LGBT issues and more importantly, not just within health and social care, but other organisations that we work with as well. So it's getting the population understanding around the issues. I was so unaware, you know, that even being the mother of a gay son, that I was still quite open, you know, to saying negative comments about gay people myself, even if it was a joke with a jag, you know, but there's definitely an underlying uh, level of homophobia there that's going right across society. And that's, that's the biggest highlight for me from the training was. I just thought the training was uh, absolutely amazing. It, did, it brought a lot about open discussion, um, even to um, social socialising and clubs and bars and the stigma and how hard it is just to be able to walk up the street, um, how hard it is just to be able to hold your loved one's hand. Other aspects is around exploring homophobia, health inequalities, heterosexism, internalised homophobia. Um, we do set a legislative and policy context in terms of understanding uh, where equality from gay people is, how long it's taken to happen um, and the recent legislative changes. And then we finish the day with uh, a, the dreaded role play of training, but uh, the, the role play to get people comfortable with some of the learnings that they've made. But then we also do a, a, a policy to practice session whereby people can walk away with a commitment saying these are the practical tangible changes that I can make within my organization and these are the practical changes that we as an organization can make. Well when we produce we produced new material after the training and um, because we were so aware of um, wording and not to offend anyone with the, within the LGBT community we liaised with Maliki um, and the Rainbow Project to ensure that we had the correct wording. So we just didn't put anything in for the sake of it. We really wanted to make sure that anyone in the community realised and by using the right words then people within the LGBT community would know that we were real. Also as part of the training, the buy-in from the, the Rainbow Project is that we offer support. Um, so if after training a few months later you're working with a person who is LGBT, you can ring and get a little bit of guidance from us um, around maybe appropriate ways or from other partner agencies, um, appropriate ways to be working with that client. Organisations like Lassie, Caravan, Rainbow are one group that provides services to gay, lesbian, bisexual people. What we've got to look at is where the wider services are provided within statutory sector and try and make the link between the two. I mean, not even statutory services, absolutely everyone should avail of this training. I find less and less that there is active homophobia amongst health and social care professionals. But I think a lot of them, because um, the whole LGBT culture is quite, is quite hidden by definition, a lot of people are closeted, that the health and social care professionals don't actually tend to know an awful lot about that culture. So I think training goes some way to supporting them. To, to learn that and to, to actually follow their own basic instincts, which is to care for people. I think uh, more confidence within the medical profession to make me feel confidence within myself because, I mean, that is your first protocol in the sense of the word that you look up to the medical profession for help and if the medical profession isn't professional enough to understand what you're all about, then it's very difficult for you to find out what you're all about. I just don't want it to be a big focus. I want everybody to just be accepted for who they are and then you won't need to have to worry about sexuality or gender identity or anything like this. Awareness from the heterosexual helpers in our community makes such a huge difference. It's the difference of being accepted that we all belong to the community. We're all included in the community. Um, 
we don't feel an outsider. And the difference between being an outsider and an insider is the difference between good mental health and not so good mental health.